What's the real cost of changing jobs? The offers out there seem fantastic, but are they real? Today, we're going to find out on this episode of the podcast if it's worth your move. Hello, I'm Andrew Winkler, and this is Driven Too Far, the truth about trucking, a podcast that helps over-the-road truck drivers balance career and family. Welcome back to Driven Too Far, the truth about trucking. Today, we're going to tackle the question about what does it really cost you to change jobs? Let's say something's not going right in your current job and you feel like it's it's time to make a change. Maybe that truck line down the road's been uh, calling you, knocking on your door, or maybe a buddy of yours works for another truck line and, and you're just really considering uh, making that change. But there's something I want you to consider and that's the cost of changing jobs. What is it gonna cost me? How's it gonna affect my bank account and my family? So today we're gonna talk about that and to kick it off, let's first off talk about the obvious thing, and that's the driver wage part. So in my experience, if you're a regional dry van driver and you're moving to another regional dry van type of job, there probably is not going to be a lot of change in the wages you're going to earn uh, between companies. They're, they're pretty similar out there. But what might happen is in that transition from moving from the old company to the new company, you could be in danger of losing a few days pay if you're not careful. So let's look at that a little bit. If I decide to make the move and I give a two week notice to my current company, I want to make sure that I'm going to be able to work out that full two weeks. I, I want to make sure that I have those paychecks the last two weeks, they're hitting the bank account. And then from a timing perspective, I also want to make sure that the new job is going to start as soon as possible. So ideally, if you could make your last day of Friday where you worked out your full two weeks and then you're in orientation of the new company on Monday, I think that sets you up pretty well where you're not going to be exposed to a lot of uh, income loss uh, if you can do it that way. So the timing's really critical uh, when you do that. But let's run through a couple situations or scenarios where uh, maybe it doesn't work out exactly like that. Uh, you give the two-week notice to your current company. Uh, the current freight market's pretty slow right now, and they say, you know what? We really appreciate you giving the two-week notice. Uh, when we would typically honor that, but under the current conditions, uh, we're okay for you just to go ahead and turn the truck and your keys in today. So all of a sudden you got an issue there where uh, today's my last day at my current company but I'm not scheduled to start with the new company for two weeks from now so what am I going to do about that two-week gap and potential loss of income I certainly can't afford it as a driver uh, I need so much in my bank account every Friday it's going to affect my family my ability to pay the bills so that's one of the things you need to consider, uh, and you really need to time things out and think about it uh, before you pull the trigger and, and give notice. One of the other things that might come up uh, in a situation like that is, as a, as a driver, as a company driver, you're probably earning somewhere between $200 to $300 per day when you're behind the wheel. And when you think about you're starting a new orientation class next Monday, um, what does that orientation pay? Now, the good carriers, they're probably going to kind of match that same pay of what you would have made behind the wheel. So maybe the orientation pays $200 per day and orientation goes a full five days, something like that. But what if it doesn't? What if that new company you're going to only pays $100 a day and it goes for five days? Now, all of a sudden, you're, you're probably at least $500 short in that upcoming deposit. Uh, where you need it to be. So that's something you got to think out. You need to ask the right questions um, to the to the new company as well so you know exactly where you're going to stand and so you can plan for these things. When you started with your current company, you need to think back about what did you sign in orientation? There seems to be a lot of paperwork that goes on. Uh, it's a kind of a hustle and bustle type thing. You're, you're signing all these paperwork and you're not, not even really sure what you might have signed during the process. They, they threw a piece of paper in front of you and say, hey, this is the agreement that says uh, if you ever decide to leave our company, this is the process you need to follow to do that. And as long as you follow this process, uh, this is how we'll handle your final paycheck. So this makes me think of things like uh, when drivers quit, do they return the truck to the terminal they need to? 
Uh, did they take the time to clean the truck out and turn it back in a reasonable condition for that carrier? So those are things you got to think about because if you don't, you're really setting yourself up for maybe some fines or penalties uh, on that last paycheck or some deductions. The uh, most companies, they expect to detail the truck. So you certainly don't have to turn it back in, in in that kind of condition. But you do need to pick up the trash, clean the things out. If they assigned you certain equipment to go along with the truck, maybe it was PPE gear or something like that. And that's all, uh, you know, that's all part of the agreement you signed when you started orientation. Be sure you're turning those things back in because if you're not, you're really setting yourself up again for possible deductions maybe you had a pet in the truck and this is a tough one uh at least for the truck lines uh we love pets i love dogs myself but uh when you have a dog that sheds in a confined cab of you know eight foot by eight foot that hair gets everywhere it gets behind the dash it gets woven into the seat cloth uh, it gets behind the cracks in the bed and everywhere else so it does take extra time and money to detail those trucks after there's been a pet in it um, to put them back into a certain condition for the next next new driver that's gonna jump in it. Hopefully you didn't work for a company that's um, notorious for holding back the final check. There's certainly some companies out there that do that. It almost gives you the feeling um, that they're out there to, to really hurt the driver. In a, in a way, they want to punish you. It's like, oh, so you're going to leave me and you're going to leave me with an open truck. Well, I'm going to show you. Uh, and you're pretty much never going to see the last paycheck you get because they're going to figure out a way to hold it for this and fine you for that and penalize you for uh, for this. Hopefully, you didn't do that. So you got to really think about those things. Put yourself in the best case scenario when you turn that equipment back in. Uh, and do everything you possibly can to get your last paycheck. And if you happen to have an escrow account as a driver or something like that, that you get the full escrow uh, back after you leave. So let's think about benefits for just a little bit and how benefits work. Um, I know at least in our company, uh, our benefits are paid a month ahead of time. So if I decide to quit my current company on the end of the month, December 31st, let's say, and um, my benefits are paid up through the 31st of the month. So when I quit on the 31st, then essentially my benefits are also terminated on the 31st. Now, if I think through this uh, tactically and I decide to quit, maybe I'm going to quit January 3rd because I know that my company prepays the benefits and they're paid through the end of the month. Now, all of a sudden, I've, I've quit my job on January 3rd, but my benefits are going to continue through the end of January. So that's something that's going to play to your advantage if you are moving jobs, uh, because there's probably more than likely going to be a gap in your health insurance coverage and your benefits from old job to new job. And most of us need those benefits. We've got a spouse, we've got kids and uh, you know doctor appointments or maybe medications and all those things. So it's something you really have to think about the timing of your departure matters and if you do the timing right and you think through it you can really minimize uh, the amount of income that that you're potentially going to lose the other thing you need to know about benefits is what about the new company and what's their policy so when do the benefits start do they start right away is there a 30 60 or 90 day delay period before those benefits start if you time your departure correctly and you leave right at the first of the month and the new company's benefits kick in 30 days later, then you've really set yourself up in a good position because you're not going to have that uh, benefit gap. But if the new company's benefits don't kick in for 60 days or 90 days down the road, uh, you're probably exposed for at least 30 or 60 days where your family may not have the coverage they need when you're thinking about health uh, benefits and maybe prescriptions and things like that. So think about that. Now there is uh, some gap insurance out there, if you will. It's called COBRA insurance, and you can certainly purchase that to get you over the hump and through the gap. The thing you need to know about COBRA insurance is that you will be paying full premiums if you go that route. So you're probably used to working for a company that's picking up a big portion or percentage of your health benefits, maybe 70% or something like that. Uh, and you're used to paying 30%. But if you do the COBRA route, 
you'll be paying 100%. And it's, it's going to be expensive, but it's certainly an option if you absolutely 100% need to have the coverage, can't afford a gap in coverage, then, then that option is there for you as well. What about the seniority that you've earned in your current company? And by seniority, this is one of those things that's a little bit harder to put dollar figures on. Uh, but I'm thinking about, first off, truck assignments. So hopefully you're in uh, a pretty new truck where you're at. They've treated you pretty good. You've worked your way up and you've earned that newer equipment. Uh, what are you going to get with the new company? Do you know? What did they promise you? At least in our company, I know we continually try to upgrade our drivers into the newest equipment that we have open. So if a new piece of equipment opens up uh, and we don't have somebody uh, scheduled for orientation to take over that piece of equipment right away, we'll look back at uh, the current drivers and we'll just say, you know, this person's doing a really good job. I think we should offer them this uh, truck that's two years newer. Uh, and see if they would be interested in doing that. So if you do that, and I think a lot of fleets do, they're continually trying to upgrade their current drivers to the newest equipment possible. What you end up with is your empty trucks in the fleet are typically older trucks. Uh, so what I'm saying is if you're making a move from one company to the next, there's a good chance you may actually go backwards with the truck and end up into an older piece of equipment. So that's something you certainly got to think about. What about your load selection as a driver? You've gained all the seniority at your current company. You work with the dispatch team well. They know you. You know them. Uh, you're getting the loads you like, the lanes you like. You're getting the home time that you need. You're probably going to have to start over at this new company. In other words, I know the recruiter probably promised you certain things and certain lanes and adequate home time and this and that, but it will take time for you to build that relationship with your new dispatch group. So they've got to get to know you, um, what you like to do, when you want to be home. And I, man, I hate to say it, but sometimes when things go sideways in dispatch and operations and, and you've got to move and shuffle some things around, I don't know that they purposely pick on the new drivers, uh, but if it comes down to a veteran driver and a new driver uh, and we have to give them one load, who are they going to pick? They're probably going to lean towards the veteran driver getting that load and the, and the new guy gets the short end of the stick, so to speak. Home time and priorities. So when I start to think about what you could lose in home time uh, in your seniority, I always go back to hunting season, you know, where we live in the Midwest here, deer season's a big deal and I feel like half the fleet needs it off on the opening day of rifle season. And to be honest with you, we still have a truck line to run, so we can't always grant all the home time and the time off requests uh, that come in. Although we'd like to, uh, we simply can't. We still have customers to service, we still have customers to service uh, so we have to be very careful with that, of how many drivers we let off at any one time. And if you're the new guy coming in at that time, there's a good chance that I probably can't approve your time off uh, right away. So, you know, what else are you going to be missing when you make that jump into a new company? These are things you just, you got to think about. And then there's the holiday side of things. We all know the holidays uh, are upon us and, and important to spend extra time with family and friends, and, and you certainly deserve that. You've been out on the road all year long, uh, and it, it kind of comes down to what part of the industry you to work in. Now, in our company's situation, we're closely tied to manufacturing, so I think you know, the manufacturing plants themselves typically shut down around the holidays, and, and that means the trucks don't necessarily have to be out there working either. But in a former life, I worked in the reefer side of things, and I know that on December 26th, those grocery warehouses uh, were opened back up, and they're looking for their frozen foods and their boxed meat, and they needed to replenish all the shelves. So in order for the deliveries to happen on December 26th, a lot of times that meant the driver was in route on the holiday. He was away from the family anyway. And I'm going to guess that in most cases that's the, the new drivers, uh, the rookie drivers, whatever that is, and the veterans probably got some preference with the holiday time off requests. Let's think a little bit about vacation pay and how that works. The first thing I'd like to ask of you is what are you walking away from at your current company? Do you have vacation buildup that you haven't used? 
Uh, and if so, what is that company's vacation policy if you do decide to leave? Do they pay it out, or is there something in their handbook that would prevent them from having to pay that out to you? So that's something to look up and ask. Um, what is the new company's policy on vacation? In other words, how fast do you earn vacation? Do you start earning vacation day one? Do you start building hours? And how soon do you have access to that vacation time? Or the old school way of doing it in trucking was you had to work a full year before you actually they before they gave you that one week or two weeks vacation uh, and that's a lot to ask so be aware of what the new policies are with vacation uh, it's not enough you know that the rec recruiter says oh you get two weeks the first year you need to ask another question is how soon do i start earning that and how soon can i start using that vacation and if the answer is, well, you're awarded that vacation after your one year anniversary, um, then you need to obviously need to be aware of that. You're going to have some time through your first year when you need to take some extra days off where there's no extra pay available for you. And I don't know too many people that can go a full year without taking some extra time off. And again, if we go back to you're earning 200 250 300 per day when you're driving and all of a sudden you're taking those extra days off for medical appointments or family events or maybe mini vacations or whatever that is those are days you're not getting paid so the vacation can absolutely impact uh impact your pocketbook so a lot of the things we kind of discussed here uh we talked about you know the the wages themselves the benefits the vacation the holiday timing and some of the seniority things, I think the best move for you is if you're seriously considering leaving your current company and going somewhere else, uh, the first thing I would do is get a lot of information. Maybe go to your HR rep in the company and just, you gotta make yourself knowledgeable about those policies that might be hidden in the handbook. How are they gonna pay out that vacation? Um, what happens if I turn my truck in and it's not absolutely clean? Is there little things hidden in their policies that are gonna prevent you from getting that full, full and final paycheck? So try to work with your uh, HR rep and see what information you can dig up. And then I think once you have the information, then you can kind of calculate out of the timing, how you need to quit, what the date you're gonna give notice, what your final day is gonna be, and then you can coordinate with that new company too as far as your, your future start date. So it, it really minimizes your income loss potential that way. One of the things I would caution you on as uh, you know, being almost 30 years in the business and I've seen a lot over the years is a lot of times when drivers decide to leave a company, it's a very emotional uh, decision for them. In other words, there's probably been some frustrations, uh, maybe with the job, maybe on the home front, could be a lot of different things. But I see some knee-jerk reactions over the years where a driver just knows he needs a change and he's not sure what he needs to change. So a lot of times his first reaction is to quit this job and try to start another one. And unfortunately, a lot of times what we end up seeing is, is they end up in probably a worse place than they already were. So. As a leader in a trucking company, I would absolutely encourage you to make sure you're communicating with your current company. See if there's something you can work through, if there's some frustrations or challenges uh, that can be addressed. Because in the end, you're probably gonna be better off financially if you stay where you're at than making that leap and moving to that next company. You're probably gonna lose some dollars if you do that. We sure hate to see that. Makes me think of the drivers uh, when I go back and look at driver applications and people that are applying to our company. These um, guys that have jumped jobs every three months or something like that, it's like, holy cow, what are they leaving on the table by doing that? And I can tell you, they're absolutely not focused on the dollars. Uh, their emotional responses, uh, something's happened and they're just like, you know what, this isn't what I thought it was, I'm out of here. I'm gonna go try the next one and then it's the next one and the next one. So they end up leaving a lot of money on the table uh, when they do that. It's certainly easier to run sometimes uh, than to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in your organization that can probably help you and make a difference. But I encourage you to do that. Uh, running, just it just doesn't solve much. And before you know it, you start developing a reputation 
of, of job hopping and you're going to find it more and more difficult down the road to land the good jobs when they do present themselves because of your because of your track record so take the time uh, try to work out work things out with your current company do what you can and if it's time to move on it's time to move on just make sure you're doing it in the right way uh, you're calculating your movements the timing of everything so you can minimize your losses Thanks for joining us here today with Driven Too Far, The Truth About Trucking. Make sure you subscribe now so you never miss an episode to learn the tips and tricks you need to know.